Paris Barkley. My colleague, Paris, as some of you know, is the president of the UK. Paris is a remarkable director, having won well over 150 hours of television, produced and directed. Um, and you heard him in the movie, and I think his insight um, as a leader and as an artist is remarkable. So thank you, Paris, for, for being here. Now, Senator, I do not know each other. Oh, she made me laugh, Senator. Yeah. This is Senator. Uh, Cedric, Cedric, actually. That's how I don't know him. I don't even know how to say his name properly. <laughs> Cedric he is now. Well, you have made me laugh, for sure. Not, not with that name. That's sure. right. If you've done better than trying, as some of us know. In fact, because of the nature of Speechless, which is, in fact, the show right now you're in, and dealing with that young boy, I'm really curious to see what your experiences are about as well. So thank you for being here. And I hope Gabriel. Gabrielle. Good, I got that right, Gabrielle. How do you know your last name so I can get it right too? Carteris. You all know who she is. She's the president of SAG and AFTRA. And also, we make five actors. Done from video games to television shows to voiceovers. It's delighted that you're here. We know when you got started as young. We're not going to mention where you started. I started old. But, <laughs> but thank you for being here. And James teaches next to her. James is a fellow director, producer, so you know he won the Academy Award recently for producing, what is it now? Get it, Walk the Line. And has, in many ways, as a, both as an actor but also as a director and as a producer, worked with stories that have stories that have been about people who have been disabled, from blind people to people who have various kinds of uh, disabilities. And so, James, I think you have a lot to share, too, and just why you've chosen these kind of materials for yourself. And if I'm going to get this right, is it Kurt Yeager? That's right. I've got Kurt Yeager right as well. And Kurt is here as an actor, an athlete, and an advocate, particularly an advocate for this very concern of dealing with uh, the fairness to anybody who is disabled. So it's good to have you here. He's also been on uh, a number of shows like your show, Sons of Anarchy. Did you guys work together? Yes. Sir. Oh, well, I want to hear what that's about. And some over there is some person who just wanted to just show up for a second to just to prove that. That disabled people are allowed to participate in this modern thing is a remarkable gentleman. And James, I have a, a feature that's about to come out as well as the dramatic feature, but most importantly, this effort is pretty astounding in terms of what you've been able to accomplish. Both entertain us, as we said, and truly instruct us as well. So thank you for doing it. So my question is why are you here? Why are you all here? Why are you here? Why don't you say this? Why are you here? Uh, Jenny made me. <laughs> She's a force of nature. Um, I'm here because I, I saw an original earlier cut of the film and I wanted to see it again. And I also wanted to, to talk to it because I don't feel like that enough uh, about the issue. And I also just wanted to honor Jenny and Jeff and, and I think Sam was it that, that put together the film because as I watch it, I feel so proud that a film can accomplish so much. And I want my kids to see it. And I want people to have the experience that the film brings, I think, very successfully. Not just historically, but just, it's very clear when it ends why this matters and why it's important. And you sort of told us what we can do about it, too. Which is, in the Trump era, the only thing we can do is just turn to our heart and turn to the things that we do to try to be empathetic and change people's opinion. So that's my opinion. Anything to shine a light on? To talk about it, I'm down for it. See, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wanted to see the film. I was really curious to, to, to see James' work. And um, also being sort of a sports uh, spokesperson for um, the show that I do now, um, I, I, I want to make sure that, uh, that I'm visible, that everyone knows that. Um, that's not just acting, but I'm also um, a, a part of a, a part of the community as well. Speechless for those who don't know speechless, just speak. Sure, sure. The the show uh, stars Mini Driver as a sort of a, a mother bear to three children, and her eldest has cerebral palsy, uh, who is nonverbal, but is uh, a typical teenager. He is. Fun, funny, uh, a jerk sometimes, and uh, uh, he communicates with a uh, 
communication board on his wheelchair and a laser on his glasses. And so he's also not verbal. So our first and second episode, we're trying to find a voice for him. Uh, I play a groundskeeper at the school that he's going to school. And uh, he wants me to be his voice. So I, I quit the uh, groundskeeping job to be, become his, uh, his aide, his voice. And, and we get on adventures together. It's, it's a pretty funny show. Yeah, why did you decide? First of all, I just have to see you in your wig and it's really wonderful. And I thought you were wonderful in the movie. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I'm here because of Jenny. I mean, Jenny, you know, it's true, she's great. So, Jenny came over a year ago to me talking about uh, the movie Cinemability, and I saw it. We've been trying and trying to make this happen. I, being the president of SAG-AFTRA, you know, our membership reflects the world, right? We, our members are diverse. We are everything from, you know, different races, different religions, different genders, different people with different abilities. And I support, um, I support the real scene being seen. I want, I want the truth to be told and to be celebrated. And I'm trying to help create access you know, it's not that uh, there aren't talented people out there of all different abilities. There's just not a road to access. And for actors, performers, we're at the end of the uh, pipeline, right? We, we're not really the decision makers. Um, it starts earlier in the game, but I want to be a part of the solution. I want us to be able to have some self-determination. And I believe that all of us have a right to work with dignity and uh, and to be able to express our craft. So this is really an honor to be um, asked to be here today. It's an honor to be with all of you. I do uh, bow to Jenny and her will. <laughs> uh, my father said to me when I was a, a kid, he said the only thing that he afforded in human beings is indifference and apathy towards the plight of others. And I think uh, through my career as a narrative filmmaker, you know, I uh, I saw, well, for example, in Walk the Line, Johnny Cash had a disease. You know, there's a disease of alcoholism. And all of us, I think, uh, Chris Reeves was a good friend, and, and, and one of the girls that I met through this foundation, she was in a wheelchair, and she'd been on a boat. She's a beautiful young lawyer. She'd been on a boat, bouncing along, and boom, broken back. And she said, you were just all tabs. I said, what's a tab? She said, temporarily able-bodied. And it really struck me at that time that, that to, to tell the stories, we're all storytellers, and to tell the stories of things that I don't know about is much more interesting to me than things that I do know about. So you asked me, why, do I, why am I drawn to telling stories about people that are di have disabilities? Well, I feel like I have my own disabilities, but they just don't show the same way Jenny says. But when I, we were just finished a movie about a man with ALS who can only, he has locked in syndrome. He's one of the funniest people I've ever met. And uh, he's also a genius. And uh, he's also survived with a trach in his neck. And uh, it's, he's taught me so much about the will to live, you know, and what every day is. So it's, uh, I think we have a lot to learn from, from each other. Also, uh, yeah, same thing with uh, anything Jenny does. I'm going to always so I'm following the whole line down here to end with her. But uh, speaking to James' point, uh, I, 10 years ago, was in a motorcycle accident and became a part of the club. I ripped off my left leg below the knee and broke my back and a bunch of other things. And after a year and a half of recovering, finally was able to walk. And uh, I didn't know anything about discipline. I had one friend in high school who had CP, and he was just a guy named Jerry that I didn't really think much about one way or the other, but I didn't know anything about people uh, uh, hard hearing. I didn't think about anybody with Down syndrome or other intellectual disabilities. I didn't think about them. I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind because it's not something I dealt with. And I think as storytellers, both writers, directors, producers, and actors, that's like the thing we need to go and just you're always told write what you know, but it's the discovery that actually creates good art. You know, learning what's going on and finding out. So 
the message I think of what Jenny's film is, is there's so many rich stories out there that they're, they're, it's like you're gonna be covered in gold dust when you tell those stories. You know, it's like, it's gonna be amazing. So, so, is that Jenny gold dust? Jenny gold dust. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jenny, I know that you're nervous. Uh, we're, we're sharing the mic. Okay. And I, I, get, I get that you're nervous, and I get the film actually has already spoken for you. But yeah. you're still here, so we're going to have you say a couple other words. Well, I have to say first that they're not, I appreciate what they said, but they're really here because of their hearts, not because of me. They have a true heart for inclusion that other people don't. And because of that, you know, James is just one of the very early stages. I went to his house once, and he had to show me this accessible ramp he had. Down to his pool. And I was like, well, do you have a family down here? They got this one. I got to come down. And I was like, ooh, this guy's interesting. And Gabby and Paris and Cedric. I get her right. Uh, I just met Cedric recently, and I knew, and of course, I know Scott Silberry. Scott was on our film before. But, and you, Jeremy, all of you kind of want Kurt. Kurt's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy. The courage. Are you saying I'm not cute, Jerry? I didn't do that. The courage. Just more tears. The courage to actually make a film about anything for any of us is takes a lot.